Hey everyone, this is Alex with Influence LA and we're back with our second episode in our series called The State of Wrestling. This is where we go over the current state of pro wrestling, mainly consisting of everything going on in WWE and AEW, the big headlines, the major uh, hashtags you might see online, anything like that, um, the, ma the big news stories. We end up covering right here on the channel. We briefly touch on them, discuss them. Uh, our comments are open so you guys can openly uh, drop your own opinions and what you guys think is going on. So yeah, without further ado, welcome and we're gonna get right into it. Um, the biggest thing going on in the pro wrestling world right now is of course the merger between WWE and UFC. They have merged into one company now known as TKO on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it's obviously a big deal. It's a, it was a monumental day in the history of uh, WWE, primarily for the fact that it's always been owned. Uh, primary ownership has always been owned by a McMahon. And this is the first time now 51% of the company is in the hands of someone else. Um, and it's a, the, the official uh, owner, parent company of the UFC, Endeavor. Um, and Ario Emanuel is now the new CEO. Um, so... Vince McMahon is technically not in charge anymore, but of course he's still on the board. Um, and then kind of, we'll wait to see kind of, you know, officially how the rest of his stuff plays out. But from the gatherings and the early rumblings, it looks like Triple H is still going to be in charge of creative. Moving forward, the big thing to kind of look out for is any potential crossovers now that we might see with UFC fighters uh, and WWE wrestlers. Uh, we might see some wrestlers maybe at the UFC events maybe walking some fighters out, doing some stuff there. We might see UFC fighters uh, transitioning into the WWE world, uh, maybe to like, you know, do some segments or do some, uh, uh, maybe a couple of special traction matches. So we'll have to wait and see how that all kind of plays out. Um, the big thing also to take away from it is there is gonna be budget cuts and not as many big money contracts given out uh, now moving forward. So someone like uh, Edge and Adam Copeland, uh, we may actually end up seeing him in AEW, primarily for the fact that, um, they might not be willing to pay someone like Edge uh, what he was what he was wanting for the to resign. So we might be looking at a situation that might actually play out with a couple other wrestlers, uh, but it may not include LA Knight, and that's going to be our next topic. We're going to transition in, into LA Knight's contract situation. That's been kind of a thing going on this week in the pro wrestling world. Um, so it was reported last week that he was had signed. Uh, a five-year extension with WWE. He was locked in, a big money deal. Congratulations to LA Knight was uh, the word going around. However, it looks like we have transitioned out of that a little bit to where now it's um, the uh, reports coming out is they are a little bit far apart in money. And that obviously isn't gonna get any better now with Endeavor kind of coming in and wanting to do, you know, uh, watch how much they spend on talent. So we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But LA Knight is still the top merchandise seller in the company. Um, every single night he comes out, he's getting the biggest reaction. Um, uh, TV ratings are always popping when he's on TV. So um, they're making notes of it. They're still keeping his push, slowly elevating him. So that's where I was interested this past SmackDown when he had the interaction with Paul Heyman. So I wanted to drop a question to you guys and you guys feel free to drop your answers down below or even drop what you think might happen with LA Knight. But I think they might be positioning LA Knight to challenge Roman Reigns for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship at Survivor Series in November. Roman Reigns may or may not be back for that event, I'm not 100% positive, but with the timing of everything going on and LA Knight potentially get, inking that deal just in time, it does look like, because uh, they are still negotiating, it does look like we may end up getting LA Knight in a big time feud, maybe he get, gets to go one-on-one -on -one with Roman, uh, and then that kind of sets him back a little bit. I don't know, I don't know if that's the way you want to go about it, I don't know if you build him up for the Rumble spot, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with LA Knight. Um, and definitely drop your guys' thoughts on what you think might happen with LA Knight down below. Uh, but transitioning on into who do you guys think should beat Gunther for the IC title? Now Gunther, now that Gunther has passed the Honky Tonk Man, the Honky Tonk Man for the longest Intercontinental Championship reign of all time, the big question is: should he even lose the title? And that's what I've been asking myself uh, because there's been a couple of uh, people out there that have said like, why would you have him even drop it at this point? Just have him go all the way to WrestleMania and potentially win a world championship there and have both titles. Um, I like that idea. At the same time, you know, you end up building a big star along the way if you have Chad Gable defeat him. Uh, maybe something at like a, at a Survivor Series, you maybe have Chad Gable uh, take down Gunther as like a big time opening match that gets the, you know, the crowd popping. Um, that, that'll be 
That'll be one of the tricky things. Uh, but I do think Gunther is the odds on favorite to win the Royal Rumble this year. So if you guys uh, think Gunther's gonna win the Rumble or do you think he's gonna end up doing something else, um, drop your comments down below on what you think will uh, be going on with Gunther's icy title reign through the rest of the year into WrestleMania. Or if you think Gunther is going to end up winning the Rumble and challenging Seth Rollins to take the World Heavyweight Championship from him at WrestleMania next year. And then finally, guys, moving into our last topic, um, Samoa Joe versus MJF for the AEW World Championship is next week, uh, September 20th, Wednesday. It'll be on AEW Dynamite. Um, that's going to be AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. It's in Arthur Ashe Stadium. That's right. The U.S. Open happened uh, earlier in the week. But now we're moving on to Arthur Ashe next week with AEW's coming to town. So uh, definitely tune in for that, guys. Um, who do you guys think is going to win? Um, a big thing is obviously Roddy Strong and Adam Cole. They're going to obviously play a factor as well. So we'll have to see uh, what kind of parts they play. Definitely going to be an intriguing matchup, though. But definitely uh, interested to hear what you guys think might end up happening. Our official prediction is we're going to go with MJF to retain next week. But... It's still unpredictable. Definitely going to have to tune in. The story will be the biggest takeaway from the match. Not necessarily anything else, but the storyline, how it progresses forward with Roddy Strong, Adam Cole, Samoa Joe, and of course MJF being at the centerpiece of all of these elements going on. So yeah, we appreciate you guys uh, tuning into the video. Uh, make sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel for more uh, videos coming in the future. And yeah, guys, uh, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we appreciate you guys tuning in and you guys have a good one. All right.